Okay. So thank you for coming. Prepare yourself. Winter break is coming. That's what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes. Um, so we'll jump right in. I'll, I'll start since I'm already talking here. So my name is Brooke. I'm one of the doctoral interns at the Counseling Center, and I use she, her, her pronouns. And then I'll let everybody else jump in. I'm Heidi Campbell. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I am um, a clinician, staff counselor at the Counseling Center. Hi, my name is Julia Paget, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a master's trainee here at the Counseling Center. Hello, my name is Noah McRae. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I am an extern um, student here at the Counseling Center. Um, and I like to just add in, similar to um, what we had mentioned earlier, do what you got to do during this presentation. If you need to chat instead of unmute, if you'd rather unmute, if you need to step away, um, whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, I encourage you to do that. Um, we would rather you do that than put yourself in any kind of space that feels uncomfortable or unsafe. So feel free to, to do what you need um, and ask any questions along the way. If anything comes up, mention it. We'll be more than happy to jump in um, and, and talk about it. So uh, <laughs> we were gonna do some uh, a pretty decent check-in here uh, and just see how people are going. Um, just wondering how you're doing, if there's something that feels present for you today or that you're bringing into the space. Um, that you want to share. And like I said, you can either chat it or unmute if that feels better. Um, yeah, uh, I'm having a pretty good Monday. Mm -hmm. It's a Monday. Um, yeah. But glad that the semester's almost over. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, it is Monday. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but we're getting close. We're getting close to that semester end, like you said. So we'll talk a minute about what we're doing today. So we'll start with a little bit of mindfulness. Uh, a lot of us here like to incorporate that at the beginning. Um, it's a nice way to, to enter into the discussion and the space feeling a little bit more grounded and in touch with ourselves. Um, do a little bit of a check-in discussion. Um, talk a minute about some things that commonly come up during these months and during this time of the, the year. And then also talk about in response to whether it's going home, whether it's staying in Boone or whatever in between is happening for you, what that looks like in terms of what identities uh, we hold, what that looks like with safety, boundary setting, and, um, and all other coping skills that are needed uh, during this time. And then resources, what is available, what might be helpful, um, things to keep in mind during this off time. Um, and then we'll just kind of wrap up. So we'll start with some mindfulness here. Noah, did you have anything you wanted to start with or do you want to jump right in? Sure. Um, just as an overview, mindfulness is a great way to kind of get you in the mood for learning and also for just being present. And this is just a short video to um, bring everybody into the same space together so that we're all ready to learn or think about what's going to happen during the break. Awesome. And usually with mindfulness, at least Heidi and I tend to say, if you want to turn off your video for this, feel free to. I know I like to have more like privacy when I'm having my eyes shut and breathing. So feel free to do that if you want to do that. So we'll jump right in. Mindful breathing. Can everyone hear? Yeah. Close your eyes and rest your hands on your knees. Bring your attention to the touch of your body on your seat. Feel the weight of your body on your chair or cushion. Make sure that your back is straight and that you're comfortable. Take a few deep breaths. While you're breathing deeply, relax your shoulders, your stomach muscles, the muscles in your face, your hand and your leg. Let go of all the tightness in your body. Now bring your attention back to your breath. Notice what it feels like as it enters through your nose, goes down through your throat, filling your lungs, and back out through your nose. 
Notice your stomach and chest rise and fall each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. And just allow your breathing to be natural and relaxed. Now bring your attention to the feeling of your breath in your nose. Feel your breath as it comes in and goes out. Just focus on this sensation, paying attention to each time you breathe in and each time you breathe out. As you inhale, maybe your breath feels cool. And as you exhale, maybe it feels a little warmer. When your mind wanders, or if you become distracted, just notice what's going on in your head, and then gently bring your attention back to your breath, going in and out. Focus on the feeling of your breath and allow thoughts and feelings to come and go in the background. Now gently bring your attention back to the touch of your body on your feet and open your eyes. Right. <clears throat> Turn on the video. All right. How was that for folks? All of the folks? Anything else on this one, Noah? Um, no, it's just to try to get everybody in the same mind space, and it's just a nice, nice thing to do, mm -hmm. especially on a Monday. Yep. Okay. Mindful breathing. Ah. You want to do it again? So, um, thinking about what we're looking forward to for the holidays, for the break, for the end of the semester, what's coming up for you? I haven't been home like much at all over the semester. So it'll just be good to see my mom and I'm planning on staying with my dad and my grandparents. Um, and they have like separate, a separate room I can be in. So, um, Looking forward to that, but it's just going to be a little isolating, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, it sounds like it's maybe a mixed bag of looking forward to, to visiting while well, also recognizing there's some, some barriers right now to making that visit feel maybe normal or. Yeah, like, well, the, the COVID portion of it too. Yeah. So. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of this one that we were about to move into. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to bring my cat with me. Not that I don't love my cat. I just, it's always very stressful to transport him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And yeah, just not being near my friends, I guess. And probably I won't have internet. So. I, I'm looking forward to that somewhat, but not all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are a few things that I think definitely add to that experience. I don't know if anybody else has, has reflections there on, on that, but um, I think the, the difficulty with breaks or going home or visiting family sometimes it doesn't mean that it's always all good things that we're looking forward to or all bad. Sometimes it's a, a mix of a lot of in-betweens. Anybody else have things you want to jump in and add? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk about some of the, some of all of those things and, or not all of them specifically, but touch on pieces of them as we move forward. So I wanted to talk a minute about um, what mental health might look like during this period and how that might change for a lot of people um, or symptoms of depression has 
have been a lot more common during this time of the year, especially with what has um, happened with COVID and the pandemic and all of the, the following uh, experiences that we've had both on campus here, but just in Boone and then also larger society and, and what that looked like in the US. Um, and some major studies came out with them, some research here about uh, what what that looks like for people with depression and and looks like about one in four said that their depression symptoms increased. Um, and that was the National Institute of Mental Health. And they looked at how much that, that COVID increased some of those already existing concerns. And that between 10 and 20% of recurrent depression tends to follow seasonal patterns. So if you kind of think about that mixture of both of those things happening at the same time, how much this potentially is something that we're also going to be faced with for the first time of recognizing what seasonal experiences are mixing with what's already increased with depression and whatever symptoms are maybe around depressive symptoms happening at the same time. So for a moment, we wanted to just touch on what that can look like that in so many ways, there's so much overlap. And so um, for some people, it's, uh, you, you might, might feel easier to kind of lump it all together and just, you know, call it what feels right. But um, for, for many seasonal pieces are what are increasing. And I really feel like there should be a season for COVID. Like I think pandemic season should be its own thing. Um, I don't know why it's not yet. So maybe people are just really behind on the research, but thinking about like, this is a season of life that we're in. And then we're mixing in what feels like a whole additional season of weather and how that changes. Um, so thinking about what seasonal affective disorder or SAD, sometimes called the winter blues, how that impacts us. And what is it? It's this idea that um, it, it's very similar, like I said, to, to typical like major depression, but um, there's a few different pieces there that, that research has found that makes it differentiate a little bit. Um, sometimes there's social withdrawal that comes with that. And I think with students, being a student, you add in this piece of like, you're leaving what feels like a piece of life and friendships and roles that you have or, or ways that you live here in this area. And if maybe even home is in this area, there's still gonna be a pretty big difference potentially with what that could look like if you're going somewhere and visiting or living somewhere new. For that time and we have a, such a long period of break this year so it's even longer than what what's normally um, sometimes difficult for people so in addition to whatever common symptoms are there for depression um, sometimes seasonal pieces add in that lower energy or that excessive sleepiness i know it's been hard for me to crawl out of bed in the morning when it's really cold and windy outside uh, it's like so much warmer under the sheets and um, there's something about that here thinking about what what food and appetite changes might happen around this time. Um, and sometimes that just specific cravings for very specific things that we're looking for and how that ties to our mood um, comes up more so here in research. Um, and so in some ways it can vary in terms of, of the intensity in comparison to depression, but it tends to be something that's specific to these winterish months where there's less light and the weather changes and things look different. Um, for students, I think that you add in that, that break period too. Um, but for this specifically to be diagnosed, it would be during winter months that have to be recurrent specifically for only these winter months. Um, if you're looking at more specifics there, you can always talk to a counselor at the counseling center or someone in the community if you have somebody as a good resource to differentiate those things. But we also wanna share how do we prevent this? How does this look different when we wanna try to work against it and cope with, with what's going on that we're entering into that season. And so uh, a lot of the times research has been po uh, pointing to, to different ways that we can combat some of these pieces. Um, some of that is light, looking at what light therapy can do or just natural light or light in different ways can impact this. Um, thinking about like that specifically has been found to be a treatment for some people that um, you don't, I know you can find things from like Amazon to Walmart or whatever that looks like of, of light boxes and, and people can find light in different ways. I think a lot of times with COVID, we're probably overlapping those recommendations and saying, if it's light outside, try to distance and get out, um, whatever space that looks like. Um, so natural light's a big one. Having a routine and having a schedule is really big, not being on uh, what's probably a, a pretty typical schedule for you that you've been in throughout the year. The sleep may change or the availability of sleep might change. So recognizing how that can interfere with that schedule that we need still and do well with. Um, exercising and getting moving, um, whatever that looks like with the, 
um, resources and the access that you have for, for movement. Um, like thinking about diet and what that looks like, remembering that we might crave or not crave things during this time, thinking about how the appetite changes. And then what do you do if you might have this, especially during COVID? Um, just overall recommending talking to a health or a mental health professional. Um, some people need additional supports and that might depend on the severity of, of what's been experienced or how long this has been going on. Recognizing that for a lot of people, it might be a lot worse this year. So validating that it, it might feel a little bit worse than normal. This has been recurrent for you. Um, efforts to get outside, thinking about getting light source in some way, thinking about how we're eating, how we're feeding our bodies with sleep, um, all of those things. And I think you mix in COVID and the amount of news that we're consuming on a daily basis, um, how much that has probably impacted some of those experiences with, uh, with worry and nervousness or anxiousness. And, and I think kind of similar to what you had mentioned is finding ways to connect with people or with things that are meaningful. Um, that can be definitely a big way to cope with this. If anything stands out to you, feel free to, to shout it out or chat it, or we can keep moving on. But um, that's the, talking about the winter blues. And so for one minute, I thought it would be a nice activity with talking about schedules and talking about making connection and, and thinking about how we're, our, we're treating our bodies during this time. I want us to take one minute to pull up your schedule, pull up your planner, pull up your calendar, whatever it is that you have or that you use. And I want you to look at um, that period of time that you might be traveling or out of that normal routine. And I want you to find some way to either set a reminder, to doodle something in that you wanna do, to uh, create a list. Sometimes people just truly look up what they're gonna do and, and note that in. So I want you to take that, um, that minute and I'll give you that now to do that um, and make sure that there's something that gets added in that's fun and part of a normal schedule. Now I kind of wish I had music to play in the background. Any ideas that others have with what you add in for fun as we're taking the last 30 minutes or 30 seconds? I think I need to make the goal for myself or uh, something along those lines about uh, just making sure I like have a human conversation every day <laughs> with somebody <laughs> yeah because it's definitely uh easier to go I mean like right now my roommate is out of town so it's just been me yeah. and my cat <laughs> yeah it's hard to have a good conversation with you know dogs and cats right now <laughs> yeah now you were unmuted for a moment did you want to jump in yeah just Finding ways where um, I find it useful um, to set a time to, like she said, force, say, okay, I'm going to talk to my friend for this long, but also just giving myself some time to walk, like a walk or just something small, um, like even 15 minutes of doing something else besides either schoolwork, um, sitting on a couch or watching TV, just getting myself outside for a little bit um, has helped keep that natural um, schedule that I was so used to before COVID um, to get back into doing something normal. Julia and Heidi, do you have things that you're thinking about? That's funny. No, I was just thinking that very same thing because I actually did that today, kind of spur of the moment. Um, went out during the lunch hour and um, just because the weather, it's chilly, but it's been so sunny and beautiful. So I went out just for about 15 or 20 minutes, just did the loop kind of around campus town. And I noticed this just amazing immediate shift in my mindset when I came back into the office, had a little bit more energy um, and just, I would say felt a little bit happier having done that. And it was all of like 15 minutes, maybe 20. I think even if I'd gone out for a brisk 10 minute walk. So yeah, I kind of reiterate what Noah was saying. 
Yeah, I would have to echo what everyone else is saying. I think moving my body is what helps me, just like getting out, getting that sun, but also maybe texting a friend um, to say, hey, I'm taking my normal like 10 to 15 minute walk. What are you up to? Try to kind of build that connection or maybe create that schedule with maybe a friend and saying, hey, let's both go walking and maybe talk on the phone at the same time, like every day. That's been helpful for me to do as that connection piece as well. Okay, well, good. So think about this moving forward, what we need to schedule in um, to create that, that routine and create something that's normal, and create something that's fun, that always helps. All right. All right, so just going to talk a little bit about um, situations where we are returning home and um, maybe not um, feeling safe or affirmed in the spaces we're going to in terms of identities. So thinking of wide ranges of identities, like I think of right now, it's it's been election season, so there may be wide variations in political or ideological beliefs. It might be around religious beliefs. College is a time of really deep transformation, so often people kind of reconsider their the identities they were raised in, you know, religious, political, or otherwise. I also think about gender and sexuality identities and families that are not accepting or affirming of that and maybe downright hostile or abusive around that. So what happens, you know, if you're returning to a space where all of your identities, you know, your multiple identities, um, any or all of them maybe are not affirmed. Um, and um, so we've talked a lot about social connection today. Sometimes we make this distinction between our family of birth and our family of choice. So um, keeping those connections with um, the people, even over the breaks, if we may not be able to see them in person, keeping connections with those people that we would kind of um, identify as our family of choice. And also thinking about how, how you might communicate with family members who are different, um, maybe not accepting or affirming. So it can be really helpful to practice to think a little bit in advance if there are gonna be difficult conversations, to maybe even practice with a friend or in front of a mirror, what you might wanna say, how you might wanna say it. Um, to spend a little time knowing what your triggers are. So this may not even be specifically around an identity, but um, uh, it might be an emotional trigger. So knowing what those triggers are and um, kind of preparing to set personal boundaries. So how might you, you know, in the case of gender identity, it might be around pronouns, your personal pronouns and correcting folks who have, or it may be, um, you know, thinking a little bit about how much of this particular identity, is it important enough for me to speak up about? And is that going to be safe, you know, and thinking about emotional and physical safety. Um, but a big part of it is affirming ourselves. So what are ways that um, ongoing that we can affirm our own identities regardless of what others, you know, in our, in our home environment or community may be saying about us. So some of that is maintaining connections to those people in our trusted circle, but also affirming ourselves. you know, self-affirmation is a really powerful tool. So that could be coming up with a few short affirmations that, you know, you post on little post-it notes around your space. Um, it might be journaling. Um, you know, there's any number of ways practicing kind of like a mantra over and over in your head, those affirmations, you know, like, for example, I am enough, um, I am worthy, I am loved, things like that. Um, and self care, that's kind of an ongoing theme that I think um, Noah and Julia are going to talk a little bit more about in terms of solutions and taking care, but particularly important if you are experiencing a situation where you're moving into a space where your any of your identities, you know, those core parts of yourself are not affirmed is just um, really prioritizing self care. What are those things that calm you down? What are those things that lift you up? What are those things that elicit positive emotions? Um, so I think that's all I have time today to say about identities. I was just going to mention two really excellent resources for folks in the LGBT community, LGBTQ plus community, which is Trevor Project and PFLAG are both 
really excellent online forums that have online chat support as well as call support, as well as some additional specific resources for going home, whether during the holidays or elsewhere. Um, so just wanted to mention that as well. All right. Okay, uh, so thinking about everything and that Heidi said, and what what can you do? What what are some what are some ways you can kind of get ready uh, before you go home? Um, and the first one to talk about is discussing rules and expectations for going back home. Heidi mentioned having those discussions, like okay, what can and can I do? Because um, these rules and expectations could be different from in your dorm versus when you go back home, and being able to be like okay. Um, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. And just being able to think about it for a little bit. So whenever you go back, there's not that jar of like, oh, I'm not back at home um, to try to get you more acclimated and be able to say, OK, I know I can do this. The next is uh, we mentioned setting a schedule slash routine and just having that having that bit that you've been doing on campus. Say, OK, every time I go to bed, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I stretch for a little bit or just anything that gets you to feel like you. Um, and to be able to schedule that before you go there. Um, and that goes into the next one of just being prepared for change because on campus and versus at home is a little bit different and, and noticing like, okay, what, what worked for me at school? What didn't work for me um, at home? And being able to notice, hey, I know that um, if I, I can give myself 15 minutes to go take a walk um, as a way to kind of help, help myself calm down at home during this time, be like, okay, yeah, this is helpful. Another thing is to download um, some self-help apps like Mood Mission. Um, Mood Mission helps with coping with low moods and anxiety. MindShift is a CBT anxiety help tool to help with uh, like your behaviors and thoughts. And Headspace is just a really neat um, app for meditation and mindfulness. And they have guided meditation and mindfulness just to get you into the mood of saying, hey, I downloaded this before I went home. So uh, I now have it. I have the tools with me. So to continue that, um, and also to talk on what Heidi was talking about specifically is setting boundaries, being able to give yourself permission for self-care and be like, hey, I need to take care of myself and how it's important to that in order for you to do your best, you need to make sure you're okay and you're able to um, take that 15 minute walk, take that time with your cat, take that time to talk with your best friend, um, even if before family dinner or if that, that drive just to give yourself some time to make sure you're okay. Um, and again, on Heidi of knowing your triggers, being able to say, okay, if, if I'm talking about politics during dinner, I know, I know that's hard for me to do. So being, being able to prep and say, okay, when we're on the discussion of this, I know um, that something might happen and I might be anxious. So be like, okay, what, what can I do in those situations? And just giving yourself a plan, having that plan before you go so that when it happens to you, you're able to do something about it or know, um, like, okay, this is how I'm gonna react. And be clear about what you need. So this could be, hey, I need, I need a break from, from family or um, I need some time by myself and be like, yes, I need this five minutes. Can you please give me five minutes? And the last is what calms you down or helps you cope. So like I said, walk, listening to music, being artistic, and that can be anything. So just finding ways to um, help you cope with the change of from being back at home and finding what works best for you. And I'll add in with the counseling center, we have specific resources for some of these things, like on our website, like self-care, self-help resources. Um, and some of these things that we, that are, that Noah just talked about, we have groups specifically for, so we get really excited about some of these specific things and do it throughout the whole year. So just want to add in that plug. All right. Is that everything on this one? Uh, yep, we're good to go to the next one. Perfect. Well, thanks, Noah, and thanks, Brooke. And I'm kind of going to echo a little bit of what's kind of already been said, um, kind of what you can do at home. I think it's important to kind of be mindful of like family patterns when you go back home and preparing for that change that Noah was talking about of like, what's the change that's happened to you while you've been away from school, but also being mindful of maybe the change that could be happening at home and maybe how, how those might collide against each other in some ways. And so I think creating a safe space within the home, kind of being mindful of 
maybe how those changes have shifted, um, but also just making sure you create a space for yourself where you can go and maybe have a mindful moment um, where you are feeling overwhelmed, where you can just go to that one space in your home where you can just breathe, um, where you can maybe go and create and get creative. I think it's really important to have a creative outlet. And I think not all of us think of ourselves as being creative and it can be as creative as creating a playlist, um, like a fun playlist that you're like, you know what, I'm in a funk mood right now. I need to go to this playlist and it's gonna help me just kind of get out of whatever mindset I'm in. Maybe you were triggered by something and this playlist could be a calming resource for you. Um, or it can be one that helps you get your routine going in the morning. Um, or it can be journaling, it can be art, it can be um, creating something for social media. If you love doing digital things, um, creating videos, um, just kind of getting that creative edge on, I think can be really helpful um, when you're at home and moving your body, kind of like we've talked before, um, whether that's yoga, whether that's just going for a walk, um, whether that's doing a high intensity workout, going for a run, um, just get up and move, I think can really help and shift um, taking walks when you need them, connecting with others. Um, everything going on right now with COVID has just really been difficult for connecting. And I think sometimes going home can make that even more difficult, especially if you're used to going home for the holidays and you're like, I get to see all my hometown friends and this might be different this year. Um, so I think getting creative with maybe how to connect with those people going back home is important. Maybe trying to figure out some Zooms or social distancing get togethers in the yard or whatever that might look like with connecting with others in a new space um, can be helpful and just allows you to help you not feel maybe alone if you feel alone at home. And so just kind of creating those um, really intentional times with people. Um, and then I love to write myself permission slips that might sound a little odd and a little um, different than what most people think. But I think sometimes writing out on a post-it note, like I give myself permission to say no today, or I give myself permission to like use my voice in a new way, or I give myself permission to actually sit here and watch Netflix if that's what you need to do today or I give myself permission to eat the second piece of pie that I normally would not allow myself to do. Um, all those are small little like self-care little tips and things that can be really affirming to you. And then I think just breathe, giving yourself permission to breathe, even setting a reminder to breathe. Um, I think sometimes if we are in an anxious or overwhelmed environment, we just forget to breathe. Um, our nervous systems get revved up. We're in a hypervigilant state um, to where we're breathing more from our chest than we are from like our deep stomach. And so I think even just going to one of the apps that we suggested, um, they have sometimes a little, I know the um, MindShift app has a um, breathing um, like segment on it to where you can do that and just take time and just clear your mind, recenter yourself, and just kind of take it as you need. Um, give yourself permission just to be as you are. Um, don't put as much expectations on yourself. Just breathe. So, yeah. <laughs> if y'all have any other, please add. There's so many things that you can do. <laughs> the breathing made me almost latch myself for a moment because when I had an Apple watch at one point in my life, it would like pop up and be like, you like, don't forget to breathe today. And I'd be like, no, I don't need to breathe. Like it was, it just, it knew I obviously, I think it was like connected to heart rate or something, but like yeah. it knew when those moments of like higher stress were. And I think that looking back, it's such a reminder of like, we do forget so easily that maybe we need to do the opposite of what our mind or bodies are telling us mm -hmm. how we're feeling overwhelmed or stressed or triggered or um, annoyed, whatever it is the feeling is with um, with the environment that we're in. And so, um, uh, yeah, I think that one just resonated a little bit um, hearing that. Great. Well, um, wanted to spend a moment with just talking about what are 
both like a, a few local resources as well as like larger resources that are available during this time or that might be useful during this time. Um, so on campus COVID testing for folks who, um, you know, are expecting to come back to campus at some point. Uh, if that is around December, I listed those times, those dates, um, so that it might be um, a time that you might need to utilize uh, those testing appointments on campus. Um, and then OASIS is a local one as well for any kind of domestic or sexual violence or interpersonal violence. And then a few others, uh, Heidi had mentioned the Trevor Project, uh, there's the Trans Lifeline, um, the Suicide Hotline is a big one as well. Um, all of those others, the one that are kind of in the middle and, and across the bottom, those are all uh, anonymous uh, lines that you can sometimes text or call. And so for some folks, it feels a little easier and safer to do that than you know, going to someone that might be on campus and you might see their face again, or just not, feels like there's an extra layer of privacy. So um, so something that could definitely be saved if, if you at all are thinking, I don't know if I'll need this, but I've thought about it or I've struggled with this maybe before, you know, take out your phone and snap a picture of the slide so you have it. Um, that information is there for you and it's easily accessible. Because uh, typically what happens is when we're in these moments of, you know, thinking about uh, what that, whether that's suicide or any kind of like crisis situation, like any kind of violence or other kind of uh, things happening, um, we tend to probably not be thinking about like, who can I reach out to? What can I do in this moment to take care of myself or to, to keep myself safe, whether that's emotionally or physically. Um, sometimes our bodies just tell us to respond. That's the trauma response. So, um, so saving this ahead of time is the most useful so it's accessible. And then I, I listed down here um, uh, a local resource, a local resource. It's so local, it's us. Um, <laughs> the counseling center, uh, one of our, our counselors here at the center wrote up an, a really wonderful like coping skills article for winter break. And so if you're curious about that, check it out. Um, there's a lot of similar uh, things being said there as here, but I think also expands in different ways. So sometimes it feels good to hear it from different perspectives and we gather different things. And then lastly, some local food resources. Did you want to share anything about this one, Julia? Um, not in particular. Most of them are um, still doing their normal schedules um, during the holidays. None of them have changed at all. I know they're at kind of first come, first serve. Um, so if you're interested in getting the food boxes or a hot meal um, to make sure to contact them before, so you can kind of reserve a box for pickup and to kind of schedule your pickup to kind of make sure that you do get um, the items that you need. But also I just got emailed um, this afternoon, another resource that app is providing to students and faculty as well. And it's the Meals for Mountaineers. And so if you just Google Meals for Mountaineers, it'll kind of pop up on their resource list. Uh, and you can sign up to get like hot meals throughout the whole um, entire semester for free. So that is a really big resource that app is providing for students and also faculty during the break. Wonderful. Thanks for adding that in, Julia. Um, yeah. Last minute updates are happening and so it's useful to check that out. So um, it's really disturbing to me that the, there could be food insecurity among staff at this university. Yes. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. I mean, I'm not okay with the students either, but like that seems like more of a band-aid. <laughs> yeah no you're absolutely right like there's there's got to be potentially some systematic changes that yeah. need to happen if that's happening Sorry, i just had to uh-huh yeah. to put that out there <laughs> yeah oh my gosh uh thank you for for speaking some honest truth there um and and i think quite honestly what's i don't know if this is the same for for noah and julia but i think something that has been pointed out to me through this pandemic is that there's been a lot of um there's been a lot of different tolls that people have had taken uh, yeah. from them or struggles uh, through this. And it's been anything from housing to food to education or access. And um, man, I, I would like to think that that isn't the case for a lot of people, but we just, we just don't know how this pandemic has hit. And unfortunately it's done that in a lot of weird ways. Yeah. So we hope that something today spoke to you, whether uh, our lovely participant here um, for joining us, or if you're joining us from watching this recording, I hope that it was something that, that benefited you and you're walking away with something useful. We so appreciate you joining us and 
ask that you give us feedback. So if you're able to um, get out your phone and QR code this um, to be able to give us that feedback, um, what I can do is uh, I'm going to, ooh, I'm going to stop share for a moment so I can also put it into the chat um, if that's useful. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you're able and willing, that'd be wonderful. Um, it helps us know how to do these better, or if we need to tailor this message for different, like for next winter break. Um, so anything that you think like would have been useful to know that we didn't cover or things that we did cover that you're like, don't get rid of that. Um, okay. how we presented, uh, any and all of those things in between are helpful. Okay. Any questions or thoughts or additional things for us? No, it was wonderful. I, I, it's not there weren't things that I had not necessarily thought of before, but I feel like it's just good to have the, the time and space to just like devote to these subjects. I did like mm -hmm. the self-help, self-care week also. And it was just like, okay, I'm also, sorry. Um, <laughs> like I'm gonna spend, you know, this amount of time on myself you know so it's very like defined mm -hmm. and easy to do on zoom so i'm surprised there aren't more people here but <laughs> i enjoyed it thank you okay i know a lot of folks watch these later and that works but that's good okay yeah, yeah. Neat. and it's a busy week people are moving and true finishing things up so well thank you so much uh yeah. Noah, julia anything from you all as we kind of conclude today and i'm gonna stop recording here and, and um, I don't